G'day, Nathan from Ozaker again. Uh, just continuing the series on looking at multi-levels in one file approach. Uh, just an explanation of what I do. And I guess my idea is that this will take on a life of its own and um, become just an option that uh, people can use and look at. I've found it very uh, a big increase in productivity by being able to do it this way, um, particularly as I do a lot of residential work and I render mo pretty well, well all my projects. And this actually gives me greater, much greater productivity in rendering within AutoCAD architecture. Um, uh, I don't try and do the high level renders that you'll get out of Max. I'm not trying to compete with that. I know that it's not going to be that good. Uh, there are restrictions on rendering, but uh, that's, that's part of uh, what I do. Just to go back and have a look at uh, how I do some of the things, just a quick overview of the layers. So the level resides in the layer name and that's done automatically. You don't have to change layers. So you've got level two, level one, level two. I've got a 3D layer for any gutters, guttering components and things like that that don't show up in floor plans. Uh, I use pretty much exclusively, I use the roof object, not roof slabs, and I'll love to show you lots of tricks that have been hidden for years on that. Um, I might use some other layers like shadow layers and stuff for, um, for shadowing. Um, that's for mainly for planning applications. And I've got a series of layers called site. I do use XRefs. Um, I try and keep the model itself in one file and that gives me the big advantage but for example my survey, my levels and all that sort of junk stuff that I want out the way when I'm doing modelling sits in an XREF called survey and that just allows me to just drop it off. Uh, I don't mind putting the mo XREFing the model into another drawing and I'll show you that now uh, in order to do the elevations and all the, uh, all the work. If I zoom out you'll see that uh, I've got room layouts and I've got uh, elevations, I've got sections. They're actually all in an XREF. Now what I do is I XREF the model into another drawing and I just call it LF. Uh, let's have a quick look at a couple of things. Now, um, I, I XREF this in. Make sure that when you XREF it in, it's an overlay. It's not, and that's changed down here. I love how they what sort of productivity hides buttons? That's just absurd to me. But anyway, when you finally find it, it's there. Make sure it's an overlay because you're going to XREF this back into the first drawing and that'll clear, create a circular reference and it just won't happen. So make sure that it's an overlay. So what I do is I XREF my model into this drawing. You can see that it's clipped. I don't want to see everything else. I just want to see the model itself. Now the advantage of doing this uh, I've got one of my users who's using my system has actually got a, a multi-building uh, site. So he's got a shed over here, a garage over here. You could actually do those as separate components or if you want to. It doesn't matter. But So my elevation symbols reside in this drawing and the selection is the XREF. All right, now that's an XREF. The advantage of doing that is if I make changes in here, I just have to save it and then update it. That's the same as the Project Navigator. That's actually uh, one of the big advantages of the Project Navigator. Uh, if you do the elevations in the same file, you can do. It's just that if you add a window, you have to then go and doing your, uh, whoops, I have to do it from here, don't I? When you do your regeneration, you have to select additional objects. When it's done in an XREF, I'm going to forget which drawing I'm in. When I'm in an XREF, I don't have to do that because what's selected is the whole model. I should be turning all the text and junk off so that it's not picked up in the elevation. It will be picked up, unfortunately. It'd be good if they made annotation and dimensions not elevate, but uh, maybe that's an improvement they could look at in the future. So what I would normally do is I would normally freeze uh, all this sort of stuff that I don't want to see in the elevations. I don't need it in this drawing. Um, all right, so I can freeze all that stuff. 
and just uh, leave the model there. But when I add a window here in the real model, I can save it, update XREF, and then simply just refresh because it's already selected that model as a whole. It's an XREF. And so that's a big, big advantage. Once I've done that, I've done all my, my elevations, my sections. You can see that's a full section. It's got a little bit of work over the top of it. Um, I can then XREF this back into this file. And when I want to do renderings and stuff, I can drop all this out, all the junk of room layouts and everything goes with it. It's all dropped. Uh, that's really, really helpful. Um, as I said before on the first video, some on a three-level house, I've had actually done the dimensions and text in paper space. Um, in this one, I haven't. I've done it in model space, but it does, as you can see here, makes model space. Yeah, it's fairly busy. Uh, now, I was also going to show you about dimensions and text. What I've done, you can see I don't have much here in the way of toolbars. All those standard toolbars I find, if I want to draw a line, hit L for line. Learn your, learn your shortcuts and you'll get a lot of speed. But I do have uh, toolbars up there, and that's because these toolbars actually run a little series of commands. So when I hit here, text, it changes the layer to text. It turns snap off. Um, it does, I think it turns polar on so that I'm doing my text flat and all that sort of stuff. So it does a whole pile of little things for me. If I hit this one, it's actually going to go to the second level text layer. And so I've just got the second level of tools. If I come back here, oh, it must be displaying here somewhere anyway. Uh, there it is my third level. You can see I've used colour coding. That's the only reason I've done these. I'd love to be able to do this in Lisp and make it automatic. Um, here I've got, um, that's actually for, for model space. That won't actually select. The layer will go on zero because it's text at one as to one. Uh, I'll show you that somewhere. Um, layer one as to 200 will actually take me to the site layer because that's the scale I use for site text. Normally at one is to 200. Uh, this is details, and it might take me to details, or might just take me to one in it. Text. That's an old thing that uh, I don't want there anymore, but I haven't fixed it up. Dimensions. Uh, it will take me to one dash dim. That's why I've got this yellow toolbar set up for two dash dim, and it's my standard toolbar. So that's the only reason I have toolbars here is just because they actually run a series of commands. That. Oh, I shouldn't get into that, but. Just as quickly, uh, if I go into where my stuff, my own menu is loaded, and uh, you can see that, oops, there you go, see. Why that's missing, I don't know, that's that's what it is, it's probably. You can see here it runs a whole pile of series commands, uh, cancel commands, change to the text layer, turn, turn the echo off so it doesn't sh display anything, change the dim style, I actually set the dim scale, here, um, whole pile of, this is actually quite an old system, been running for many years. There are newer ways to do it. I don't use annotated text and that yet. There's other complications that come into it, but you can, you can all use all those systems if you want to. It's uh, getting near to the end of my 10 minutes for this video. Uh, certainly if you've got any questions, put them in the question in the comments section. Love to answer your questions and share with how I do stuff. Cheers.